In this short video, we're going to go over a quick MCAT hack, and this hack will work when your answers are a chemical reaction. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We're going to have three steps for this hack. We'll look at those now. So our three steps include first, balancing for charge. I always like to start with charge. Charge is a really good starting spot because it's easy. You can see it usually immediately, and it's a lot less tedious than balancing for the atoms on both sides, which is our next step. After this, we'll go ahead and balance the atoms. And I always like to start with anything that has a stoichiometric coefficient. I like to start with things that have stoichiometric coefficients because those are usually the things that are liable to be unbalanced on either side because that stoichiometric coefficient is supposed to reconcile and balance the two. Now, if at this point in time, we're still left with answers, which can definitely still happen, then we're on to step three, which is actually answering the question. But even still, I always like to start by first looking for the balance of charge and balance of atoms because it can get you at least a couple of eliminations, if not the answer, a surprising amount of the time. So after this, let's go ahead and look at two examples so you can see how this will work in action. Let's go ahead and look at two examples. Here's our first one. It says, in yeast, fermentation converts acetaldehyde to ethanol by regenerating NAD+, which of the following shows the balanced reaction for this process. Initially, we might be thinking that this is a metabolism question, but because our answers are chemical equations, we can begin by balancing them and seeing if we can find an answer that way. To do this, we're going to go ahead and look at the charge in our reactants versus the charge in our products, starting with A. We'll begin by scanning for anything that has a charge in it. So on our reactant side for A, we just have the H+. Plus. And since we have a plus one, but there are two of these, that is a total charge of plus two on the reactant side for A. Now we'll go ahead and look at the product side and see what it converts to. As we scan through, NAD is the only thing that has a positive charge. So we'll go ahead and look at that. And since there's only one of them, this is now a plus one charge on this side. Therefore, we can go ahead and get rid of A because the charges are not balanced. And therefore, this cannot be the correct answer. Let's repeat this process for the rest of them. And we'll see if we can find an answer. And if not, then we'll move on to our next step. OK, so for this one here, we see that, again, we have an H plus is the only thing that's charged. Again, there are two of them, which means that we must have plus two here. And then on the product side, we have NAD plus, And this time, we have two of them. So this will work since it's balanced in this particular instance. We have to leave B in as a potential answer. Let's go ahead and scan and look at C now. And here we can see that we just have one H plus. So for C, on the reactant side, we have plus one. And when we come over to the other side, we see NAD plus. And that's also just one, so this is going to plus one. If we now come to D and we look at the H plus here, it's only one H plus, so it's plus one. And then again, on this other side, we see NAD plus. That means that in this particular case, this also balances in terms of charge. At this point, we've only eliminated one answer, so we'll go ahead and move on to step two. And for step two, we're going to be looking to see whether or not the atoms are balanced. Now, the easiest way to do this is to begin by looking at things that have stoichiometric coefficients. So for example, we should look at the two and we should look at H pluses, or we should look at NADs. And if we scan through both C and D, we'll go ahead and look and see if there are stoichiometric coefficients. Now C doesn't have any stoichiometric coefficients, which doesn't automatically mean that it's right, but we'll need to take a deeper look at it. So we're gonna leave it for now. Maybe we'll be able to eliminate everything else and that'll give us the right answer. So in D, we can still see here that we have a couple of, uh, really just one, we have one, stoichiometric coefficient. And now that we've gotten here, we can begin to pick which stoichiometric coefficient we want to start with. Now, in B, I would advocate going for the NAD. The H's are spread out amongst a variety of different areas. There's an H right here in the CH3, and another one here and here as here. And again, they're sort of spread out. So it's just going to be a little bit more time consuming to actually go and count them. But on the other hand, NAD plus is just in one spot on both sides. And so we can go ahead and look at that and see if they actually balance. So in B, we have a single NAD. So we have one NAD over here. And in this case, it's now going to two NAD. Well, that doesn't work because again, that's not balanced. And so B can't be right because even though the charges balance, the atoms don't. Let's go ahead and skip C because remember, we didn't actually find something in there and we'll skip to this one. And again, here we can see that we should just check that NAD. There are two NADs on this spot and over here, there's only one. And so in that case, we're going the opposite way. We're going from two NAD down to one NAD. This doesn't make any sense. And again, this is not balanced. And so we can go ahead and get rid of this answer as well. That means that C must be the correct answer in this particular case. And just so we can see that this is, in fact, balanced, we'll go through each of the different atoms and show you that they are balanced. So let's start first with our carbons. 
on our reactant side, we have one, two carbons. And on our product side, we have one, two carbons. So that balances. Now let's go ahead and move on to hydrogens. So looking at hydrogens, we have three, four, five, and a six hydrogen there. And then on the other side, we have three, five, and six. So our hydrogens definitely match. Now let's move on to oxygen. We have one oxygen right here and another oxygen on the product side. So that also matches. Lastly, let's go ahead and look at our NAD. Our NAD right here matches with one NAD over here. And so C is the only one that is actually balanced. Now, this isn't always going to give you the correct answer. There might be some left. And that's where you would go ahead and actually begin to answer this question. In this case, we would, might need to use some of our metabolism knowledge. But let's go ahead and look at another example where we can see this in action in a more general chemistry type setup. So this one here, it says, which of the following represents the balanced reaction that is taking place in experiment two? Now, we haven't been given passage information, which you probably would have been given in this case. But remember, we're just approaching this from this pure strategy piece where we're looking to see if the equations actually match up and could they actually be balanced. Again, we're going to start with charge because, in my opinion, it's the easiest. So let's go ahead and do that for each of these. So we'll start with A. And on this side here, we have 3 Mg2+, plus, so that is a total of 6+. There isn't anything else that's charged over here. So let's go ahead and look at this other side. Here we have a 2, and it goes to a 3+. plus. So in this particular case, that's also 6+. plus. So A is a potential answer that could be correct. Let's go ahead and move on to B now. So for B, we have 2 Mg2+, plus, so that's 4+, plus on this side. And then when we come over to this other side, we have 3 Au3+, plus. that would be 9+. plus. So already we can get rid of B as an answer since it isn't balanced. And now let's go ahead and move on to C. So for C here, we have Mg2+. Plus. We only have 2 plus on this side since nothing else is charged. And then when we come to this other side, we have 2, 3 plus for the Au. So that would be 6 plus. So that also doesn't re reconcile in terms of its charges. So C is out as a correct answer. Let's, lastly, let's go ahead and look at D now. So here we have 3 Mg2+, plus. that would be 6 plus on this side. And then when we come over here, since there's anything charged over there, we have a single Au, so that would be going to 3 plus. Okay, in this case, A has to be the correct answer, and we can tell that just by looking at the charges. Now, this isn't always going to be the case. I've set these questions up so that we can solve them in this way. We didn't actually have to read the questions, but most of the time, you'll be able to eliminate at least one or even more answer choices if you go with this particular strategy. And the beauty of it is that you don't actually need to know that much about the question to utilize it. So give this a shot on your next MCAT exam, see if it helps you. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and share this with anybody else who might be taking the MCAT.